Hopefully when I'm done with this talk, you will want to put these little guys in your yard. Okay, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit about the description of the mason bees, how you can attract more of them to your home. i will do a little bit about mason bees versus, versus honey bees. We'll talk about the life cycle of a mason bee, which is very important. Some of the pests that they can get and a little bit about cleaning them out, cleaning out your cocoons and your nests. Okay, these are called orchard mason bees. Sometimes people call them blue orchard mason bees. They are a native to, the, to North America, so they are one of our native bees. They are one of what we call our early pollinators. These guys are out usually mid-May to, excuse me, mid-March to mid-May. That's when they do all their pollinating. They come out when it's still a little bit too cold and the honeybees aren't out yet. Your early flowering crops like your blueberries and your, some of your fruits, your plums, those are the ones that will really do really well by having mason bees around. They're a very gentle bee. The males don't sting at all, and the females will only sting if you trap them or, try to, or almost squish them in your clothes or something like that. They're a solitary bee. They don't have a queen. They have a female and they have a male, and that's all there, that's all there is. And like I mentioned, they are active from mid-May to mid-March to mid-May. Uh, this picture that you see of this little guy, this is a boy. Easy to tell the boys from the girls. The boys have that cute little white puff of hair on top of their head, or gray, depending on how old he is, I guess. They also have longer antennas, and the males are a little bit smaller than the females. And that's usually the way it is in the insect world. The males are smaller than the females. All right, what, where do mason bees nest? They nest in anything they can find that is a little bit bigger than the female's body, which is somewhere between a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. They will, like, they, in nature, they like empty, hollow, uh, hollow reeds, bamboo, anything that has a little bit of hole in it. Those of you that have T111 siding, we get calls of people telling us that, I've got these bees, they're going into my siding and they're ruining it. Well, mason bees do not drill holes they only use holes that are already there. So you don't have to worry about them ruining the side of your house. They're just using that little, ha that little tiny hole that's already there for them, the perfect spot for them to go into. I have seen them in electrical outlets, and people have them in their shed or in their barn, just a nice little hole, perfect, time, perfect size for the female to make her little nest. Back there we have a display of mason bees, and you'll see one that is no longer viable, but it's in the, the end of a hose nozzle. Any place they can find, they will use. But if you really want to encourage more of them to your home, you can put out your own nest. Like I said, there's a nice display back there and it has several different types of nests. You can use wood blocks, drill holes in them, and put these straws in them. They sell special straws that are made specifically for mason bees. They're just the right size, they're just the right length for the mason bees. And you can use PVC pipes and then stick all your straws in there. There, um, the picture up there on the top, the top picture you'll see, you can see that plexiglass. Uh, one of the master gardeners from Washington County, Ron Spindle, he makes those and he is really into mason bees and he's got a lot of videos on television, so if you, uh, excuse me, on the internet. So if you go to Washington County Master Gardeners and, and Google mason bees, you will find a lot of his videos on the mason bees, very interesting things. He makes these clears with clear plastics so that he can take them apart and look and actually see what the bees are doing. Okay, if you want to attract them, yes, you have to have the nest, but there's a few other things you need to have too. You need to have food. They need to have food. Mason bees don't go very far away from home. Honey bees can fly up to four or five miles away from their hives in order to find their food supply. But the, the mason bees, they usually stay within 300 feet of their nest. So they're going to be pollinating your plants, not the neighbors in the next block. They're gonna pollinate your plants. That's what they're really made for. They prefer composite flowers, the ones that have the tiny, tiny little middles inside of them, but they will come to any flowers you happen to have in your yard. The mason bees, when the mason bees come out right now, Pretty soon, hopefully, we had a colder winter, so we're not sure exactly when they're going to come out, depending on how cold it does stay this spring and this month. 
but you'll notice your Andromeda bush. Those of you that have Pieris japonica bushes are almost starting to bloom. When those bloom open, you can almost bet that that's the time that your mason bees are going to come out of their nest and start their pollinating. They really like the blueberry blossoms. It's really good. If you have blueberries and you want to make sure that they get a lot of pollinating, pollinating done, definitely have some mason bees and have them close to your blueberry plants because they really like the shape of the little blueberry flower. They also need mud. They use the mud in their nest building. And luckily, we have clay mud here because they don't like sandy silt mud. It doesn't hold together good enough. They can't make a little mud plug. And back there in that display, you will see I have some mason bees, I have some mud plugs, I have some pollen balls, I have everything that you will see inside of a mason bee nest back there. So before you leave today, don't forget to go back and look at the display. The, um, if you don't have mud, which whew, we all have mud, I think. <laughs> Actually, we don't all have mud. One master gardener that lives on has plants everywhere and she didn't have any mud. She had to come to my house to get some dirt. <laughs> but the rest of us, I think we all have enough clay for these little guys. Now, mason bees versus honeybees. One's not better than the other one. They just have their own capabilities, their own jobs to do. But I'm going to tell you a few things that's very special about mason bees. Mason bees are active at a lower temperature than honeybees. True Oregonians. They don't care that it's a little cold out there. They don't care that it's a little rainy out there. They're going to come out anyway. But the honeybees, no, they're not from around here. They're from Europe. They said, I want to stay warm. I want to stay inside of my hive, and I'm going to make some honey. That's all I want to do right now. So like I said, as soon as the temperature reaches about 50 degrees for several days at a time, you'll probably start seeing the mason bees come out but you probably won't see the honeybees yet. They'll still be in their hives. Um, mason bees, they are really hard workers. They are early risers. They'll get up in the morning, they go and they work, 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 and they work until nighttime, and then they're done for the day. The honeybees, yeah, they don't care. They don't want to get up early, they don't want to stay up late. They have other things to do in the hive. And I'm going to tell you why the, why the mason bees work so hard during the day, too. They also, like I mentioned, they stick closer to home. They're not going to fly away. They're going to stay closer to home. Now, it doesn't take as many mason bees to pollinate a fruit tree as it does a honeybee. How many mason bees do you think it takes to pollinate a fruit tree? Three. Three? Any other guesses? 500. 500? Well, she's closer. Seven. It takes only seven mason bees to pollinate. How many honeybees does it take to pollinate? 17? 52? How about 545 honeybees to pollinate a fruit tree? And the reason why is because what the female does, what her life cycle is. This is the life cycle of a mason bee. In spring, she will wake up early. Now, the males come out first. This is really interesting. If you have a straw, and the straws are usually about six inches long, they are six inches long, the ones that you purchase, the female, nature is so smart, the female knows that she's going to, that the males want to come out first. So she's going to make sure that the eggs that she lays at the very back of the straw are going to be females, and the lay eggs she lays at the very front of the straws are going to be males. Because the males wake up first, they come out, they do need to do a little bit of eating before they mate. Then mating occurs, and then the males die. That's all they're good for. Sorry about that. Um, three or four days after mating, the female's going to start her nesting process. She's going to go get that mud that you have for her, hopefully not very far away from the nest site. She's going to get collect that, come back to her straw or her nest, wherever it is, and she's going to put a little bit of mud in the bottom. Then she's going to go visit flowers, and this is why she stays awake all day long. She's going to go to 75 to 150 flowers in one day. Busy girl. One very busy girl. And then she'll collect all of these flowers and she'll, she'll make about 15 to 20 trips to the nest site, to the flowers, to the nest site. After she collects that many, then she'll lay an egg inside of there. So she's already got the pollen, she's got the nectar, and now she laid her egg in there. Then she's going to go collect a little bit more mud and make another little mud plug. Because remember, these are solitary bees. 
They are each individual bees, so she doesn't have to have them all together. She wants them all separated. She can lay 30 to 40 eggs in her lifetime, and that's about all the days that she will live, is about 40 days, and then she's done. So inside of this little straw, inside of their little nest, after a few days, the egg will hatch, and then the larva, the egg hatches into the larva, and the larva will feed on that nectar and that pollen inside of that tube for about 10 days. And then they will spin a cocoon, and inside of the cocoon, they will start to pupate. And through the summer, they will transform themselves from the larval stage to the adult bee. And by summer's end, every bee inside of there is full grown. If you were to take your, if you were to take them out and undo the little cocoon, you would see a full-size bee, okay? They stay in that, in that state until the next spring when they come back out again and do it all over. Now, they do have a few problems. One of them is called a chromium mite. And what happens is when the female is out flying around from flower to flower, these little mites land on her body. And then when she goes inside of the straws, to lay her eggs or to put the pollen and nectar in there, they come off of her body. Well, what these little mites do is when the larva is in there and they want to eat the pollen and eat the nectar that's in there for them, the mites, if the mite population is too high, then the little larvae aren't going to have anything to eat. They will die and you're, you won't have a bee come out. There's another little insect called a chalcid wasp. It's very, very minute, and you almost need the, the magnifying glass to see one back there. They're pretty ingenious. They can actually sometimes even lay eggs through the straw. That's why we have a, a, a heavy covering for the straw and then a lighter covering inside. These little chalcid wasps lay an egg inside of the cocoon and then the egg hatches out and eats from the inside out. So you also do not have a viable bee that comes out. So you can make raising mice and bees really simple or you can make it very complicated. How many of you have ever cleaned your bees? Has anybody? Okay, a few of you. And they all have orange badges on. Amazing. Okay. If you want it to be simple, go purchase your nest boxes, buy your nest boxes, uh, put some straws in there, put them out by the plants that you want to pollinate and leave them, okay? If you want to get a little bit more fun, at the end of autumn, maybe September, I would say October or November, you can pull the inner straw out of your nest box, unwrap it, and you will see cocoons like that. You will see all the little bees. Now remember, there is a full-grown adult bee inside every one of those. You take them out and your, your handout has a little bit of information about this. Um, there's also more information from the Master Gardeners. You, you take them and you can make it either a, a really nice ble bleach solution and you're actually washing those cocoons and you're washing them to get all those little mites off of them. And after you do that, then you take them, you put them in a box, you can put them in your refrigerator if your husband or wife doesn't mind, or you can put them out in an unheated shed and wait till next spring. And about this time of year, you can bring them out, set them underneath your nest boxes, and as soon as they emerge, they'll have all these straws ready to go into again. Now, if you wanna do it simply, here's the thing to do. So how many of you have straws right now? Okay, Sometimes, some of those straws have viable bees in them. Some of them do not. And when the bees come out, the female's going to clean out that straw and go right back in. So they're going to be coming out, going in, coming out, going in. You're not going to know which straws were viable and which straws were not viable. So I want you to go home right now, take a magic marker, a colored magic marker, and put a little tiny dot on every one of your straws, just like it shows in the picture. Then, when summer comes along and you look at your straws, any straw that still has your blue dot on it, that was not a viable straw. No bees came out of that straw. So you can remove that straw and put a new straw in its place ready for next year. Now, remember how I said that the bees will, the female can lay 30 to 40 eggs in her lifetime? In a six inch straw, you'll probably have four females and three males, maybe four males. So just think if you have four females in one straw and they each can lay 
30 eggs, you're going to have to have a few more straws next year. So if you, don't, if you have some straws filled now, you might want to get a few more straws, put some extra out there, because they need a lot of room. Excuse me, they need a lot of room. So right now, purchase your bees if you haven't. You can purchase them in straws, and some places will sell them in little boxes, already clean cocoons. Uh, set out your next boxes. If you have them put in the refrigerator, or the refrigerator or in a shed, you can put them outside about now. Also, mark your plugs if you want to. And if you have the clean ones, take them out of storage and get ready for them. So watch the fun begin. And that is the end, or is it just the beginning? <laughs>